This is kind of going to be a contradictory hot take video, and I don't want to send the wrong message because getting new gear all the time just for the sake of acquiring gear really isn't helpful to anybody's creative output in any meaningful way. But there's already an ocean of videos out there focusing on combating gas and how you can do that. I even have one out there myself. So I think it can be really important and interesting to take a look at the other side of the coin and see how tapping into that feeling of gas might actually be helpful to your creative output and how you can utilize that to help push your current gear even further. Hi, my name's Daniel, and I like synths, samplers, guitar pedals, etc. Let's be real for a second. <laughs> Music gear is kind of like toys when you were a kid. You know, you'd go into the store with your parents and you'd beg for that shiny red fire truck or that cool new video game. Star Fox 64 was mine. I finally got it, and one of my favorite games of all time, by the way. But now you're an autonomous human being, adult presumably, and you can buy stuff with money from your soul-sucking job. And hobbyists like stuff because stuff is fun. Interacting with physical objects is really cool in a kind of interesting way. It's like interactive play where you're learning and you're interacting with these objects that are very scientific and thoroughly engineered, but used for creativity. And there are probably a bunch of sick demos out there that made you lust after that particular piece of gear in the first place. So what is that actual feeling, that, that feeling of desire, you know, the feeling of gas? Because technically gas, gear acquisition syndrome, is the act of purchasing gear over and over again. Um, but what I really want to tap into here is the feeling that sort of precedes that action. And again, how you can tap into it to make yourself a better musician. Yeah, that feeling that leads up to the acquisition of gear is really useful, interesting, and important. But where does that feeling come from? I believe that the feeling of gas comes from beans. Being enamored always, never satisfied. That feeling starts with the idea, an obsession of how that piece of gear will affect your creative output. Again, it's just an idea, it's, it's, an, it's your imagination. In the most simple terms, it's that thought that's like, oh, I hear that sound, I could integrate that sound into my music, and that would be like the missing link I need to finish that album, to finish that song, to really lock down the essence of what I wanna communicate with my art. And that type of thought process is what causes you to procrastinate. You know, it makes you stop making any music until you get that piece of gear because you don't want to miss out on what that gear has to provide for your setup. This is so specific, but you probably know what I'm talking about, right? But you know the drill. You get that piece of gear, you tinker around with it, you recreate the cool sounds from the cool demos, and maybe you record a little bit with it, but then that feeling of novelty kind of wears off. It, it goes away, and it becomes like any other piece of gear in your setup because you probably had that feeling for all of the other pieces of gear in your setup too. So yeah, maybe that piece of gear wasn't what you imagined it would be for your creative output. Maybe you needed something else to keep working on that album and finish that song. Discipline versus motivation is a really common concept in any sort of field where there's there's like a tangible output, right? The most common example would be exercise and Nike capitalized on this decades ago. Forming habits is all about sticking to the process in spite of how you're feeling. And unfortunately, gas is just that, it's a habit. The process of feeling enamored by a piece of gear is directly related to the hobby or the habit of researching synths. And I wanna make a point here that playing music and being into gear and researching synths are two different hobbies. And I also wanna be clear that I think researching synths and being into the engineering and design process and learning about stuff is a really cool hobby. There's nothing wrong with it. The problem arises when your hobby is trying to make music and it turns into researching synths. They can coexist, they can exist separately, but when one tries to be the other, that's where the issue lies. Learning and knowing about new gear and acquiring that gear does not equate to being happy with how it feeds into your musical and creative output. I'm heavily involved in both of these hobbies. Clearly, I have a channel that's kind of based on gear. I try to make it as educational and focused on specific devices as I can. But still, of course, I research stuff. Of course, I spent hours watching Superbooth updates this past weekend. And side note, a lot of stuff really wowed me this year, as I'm sure you can see from some of my colleagues' videos. Like, there was so much great stuff. I think it was a pretty spectacular year for the convention. But what I spent more time doing this week weekend was putting together my studio and thinking about how I'm going to sort of shift my creative perspective in this new space that I have. I've been playing my Korg mini log every day for five or 10 minutes even. I've been super busy, but I'm just trying to squeeze in time because again, I'm trying to maintain that habit that I've formed of playing music with the gear that I got. So yeah, take that sort of habitual nature of consuming content the way you would watch a show, because that's what I do. I don't really watch Netflix. I watch YouTube. Take that habit and just apply it to 
playing an instrument that you have. That's a great way to take that feeling of gas, acknowledge it, and then channel it into actually making music. Learn to separate that feeling of wanting into the actual feeling of wanting to create. So what do you do when that's kind of hard to overcome and you still really get that itch to, to get that new sound that may not be achievable with your current gear? Remember that ultimately, gas comes from an intention to further your art, to better your music. That's the intention. It's your creativity. You get inspired because of how it's going to affect your output. It seems really obvious, right? Like that sound is what you need to get your music to push the envelope, right? But you know that that's not likely actually going to happen. It's not to say that the gear isn't going to be useful, but you know it really isn't going to totally change your music the way that you, you know, think it is. You can almost always do what you thought that new piece of gear would do with your current setup. Specifically, like think of the DAW. Instead of buying another effect that's $400, buy a $20 plugin or a free plugin. There are so many free plugins and learn how to use that. There's still that feeling of novelty that will inspire you, but you're going to spend a lot less time sort of like pining and researching and more time just doing. And it's also a really great way to learn a new workflow. If you're not interested in a DAW or you're stepping away from that, try as hard as you can to patch that sound that you heard in that cool demo on your current gear. Something that's pretty budget and affordable like the Korg Mini Log can really do a lot. And if you come back to the channel in a few weeks, you're gonna call me a hypocrite, but I can explain. Just subscribe and stay tuned. But I think that the most effective, important, and beneficial thing, and kind of the thesis of this video, is to do the following method. Think about why that specific piece of gear and in particular, the sounds that the gear is making is inspiring you. What is it exactly about the sound that drew you in in the first place? Be as specific as you can, but also be abstract in addition to the specificity. Separate them. Write down words and phrases describing the sound, but also do some free association. This is like a manual physical practice. Like I want you to type stuff up, make notes, write it down. For instance, maybe you're gassing over a new granular effects pedal. Maybe it makes you feel shocked, spacey, obtuse. And maybe specifically you like that it sounds choppy, glitchy, robotic, things like that. Now think even further past replicating a sound one-to-one. -one. What can you do with your current setup that makes a listener feel spacey, obtuse, that sounds choppy and glitched? Do you have tools that can already do those things that can make those type of sounds and elicit those types of emotions? Because that's what art is about. It's about creating something that elicits a response with tools that you're familiar with and comfortable with and talented at using. That's why people are listening to your music over somebody else's music. This video is sponsored by DistroKid, and I recently discovered a feature on DistroKid that I had never used before, and it's honestly so cool and simple. So you're going to click the little square icon menu. I should probably learn what that's called. It's like a hamburger menu, but squares. Anyways, you're going to go down to the promote yourself option and scroll to promo cards. This is really just the coolest thing ever. Um, we're going to use Alpine Lights, my most recent album that I used DistroKid for, and click Generate Promo Cards. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It comes up with all of these cool tiles to sort of, you know, upload to social media. It's formatted to be used as vertical content. And like they send you straight to New York City. You can go to Times Square with your music and you can scroll through these options and just pick what you feel like best suits your music. I tend to gravitate toward these types of minimal patterns and I'm downloading a ton of these and not showing you any in full resolution. So it's just really high quality imagery and it's instantly generated. And it's a really cool way to provide a new background for your Instagram story, for example. DistroKid has been really great to partner with this year and I wanna thank them again. If you use the link in the description of this video, you can get 7% off of your first year of membership with DistroKid. So yeah, go put out a bunch of music. If you have music that's finished that you haven't released, there's really no excuse to not use DistroKid. To summarize everything here, I want you to be strategic about the way you interpret your feeling of wanting a new piece of gear. Contextualize that within the parameters of your own setup. Think about mood. Think about timbre and tone. Different types of sounds can be replicated in so many ways, but the thing that makes your music uniquely your music is the mood that only you can create with the tools that you have and are familiar with. Limiting yourself is the best way to push the envelope. That's my shitty job interview answer. My limits are my strengths. They help me be unique or whatever, but it's kind of true. So why is gas good? Because ultimately, gas comes from the desire to better yourself, to move your music forward. And that's all you really need to know right there, is that it's tied to a desire to improve your art. Think about how a sound made you feel and go ahead and create that with what you already have. Thanks again to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Feel free to go check out my Patreon and Instagram, say hello, and engage with my content if you enjoy it. It's the best way to show your support, and it really helps grow things around here. Peace.